Hello and welcome to this absence demonstration. My name is Gary McAllister and today we're going to be looking at uh, alternative methods of managing users' settings and personalization within the absence management suite. Now I say alternative methods because um, for several years now the, the best practice advice that we give um, to manage this sort of information is to use the personalization server um, in the absence management suite. The personalization server utilizes SQL and IIS um, and it, it enables us the flexibility to deliver the user's settings uh, on demand um, to any desktop uh, platform or application, however they're delivered. Uh, that being said, however, um, the Appson Suite is nothing if not flexible, so there are uh, alternative methods available um, to manage this, uh, this kind of data for our users. Um, so today we're going to look at some of those methods, uh, and namely uh, things like hiving, folder redirection and uh, synchronization as well. So we're going to start off by looking at a user in my environment who's not currently being managed by Absence. And uh, I'm just going to log him onto a Windows XP machine first off. So this is my local user, and as the name suggests, we're using a, a local profile here um, for this user. Um, this user has previously logged onto this machine and uh, made some settings to uh, made some changes, sorry, to some settings. So if we open up uh, a couple of applications, so Excel and Adobe Reader. You can see the user has previously applied some personalization uh, on this environment. Now because we're using a local profile, the user has a one-to-one uh, -one relationship with this machine uh, and therefore they are kind of locked into um, uh, to this device and this operating system as well. So all this information is uh, still within the, the, the local profile at the moment. So we're going to make some changes to a couple of these settings here. So. We're going to change the orientation of the windows and I'm also going to change the color scheme of Excel as well. There we go. So the user's now uh, provided some, some, some further personalization to these applications. So I'm now going to close both of these down and I'm going to log on to a Windows 7 machine. So same user. Um, again, we're going to be getting a local profile on Windows 7. Now the reason we're using local profiles and not roaming is because uh, roam profiles uh, wouldn't be able to move between Windows XP and Windows 7 uh, and therefore they wouldn't give us any benefit uh, in this scenario. So the user gets to their Windows 7 desktop and when we open up those same applications again we can see that the previous personalization that the user had uh, applied uh, has not uh, come across in this case which is what we would expect. The user is uh, in that one-to-one -one relationship with each of these devices, each of these desktops, and therefore their settings aren't able to roam. Now that becomes a headache when it comes to things such as migration um, from XP to Windows 7, or in the future from Windows 7 to Windows X or whatever comes next, um, but also between different uh, delivery methods of applications and um, different delivery methods of the desktop as well. Um, so we're going to Log, both, log this user off of both of these desktops and then we're going to start managing them with AppSense. So just while these two are, are logging off, I'm going to jump back onto my management server, which is where all of my configuration is done from. Um, now a few things we're going to look at on here before we, um, before we start managing this user again. Now first off, I have a uh, home drive on my central server and as you can see I've got a few folders in here for some of my other users. Uh, now these other users are being managed by Absence at the moment and this is where we have uh, redirected and synchronized some files previously. So fairly standard stuff such as uh, the downloads, documents, cookies, uh, that kind of thing. But at the moment we have no entry in here for my uh, local user. So all we need to do is just pop them into a group with an active directory. And I've created a group called Legacy. And this is going to prompt Environment Manager to start managing the user settings. So what we can do now is um, log our user back on and, uh, and start managing them uh, uh, with a bit more efficiency this time. So back to our XP machine again. Now we've not changed the user's profile, so they're still going to get the same profile uh, as before. And as we get to the desktop, we can open up those applications again and see that their settings are as, we, as they were when we left them previously. Um, so these settings are uh, again coming from the local profile. The difference is this time when we close these applications down, we can go back to my central server. We can see we now have an entry in here for my local user. And if we open this up, 
we can see we've got uh, some folders that we've redirected. We've also got this folder here called Hives. Now the Hives folder has uh, now been populated with some files uh, which are reg hives from the various applications. So we specified uh, Adobe Reader and also Office as well to, to hive settings uh, out from. So we can now log the user on to the second machine, which is our Windows 7 machine. And again, same profile is going to be loaded. And when we open up the applications this time, we're now reading in that hive that's on our central server. So the user settings have persisted across between the different environments. So just to show um, that working in reverse, this isn't just a, a one-way, one-time migration. I'm going to make the changes back in the opposite direction. So we're going to move some toolbars around. And so let's make this really obvious by making the, uh, the windows quite small. So we're going to close both of these again. We're going to move back to Windows XP. And the settings have come instantly across this time. This is to do with the way that we're managing the user's settings. Instead of bringing them in at log on and saving them out at log off, uh, we do it uh, on demand throughout the session. So when Adobe Reader loads, we bring in that, uh, that hive for the Adobe Reader settings. And the same with Microsoft Excel and Office as well. Um, so we're avoiding those two traditional pain points with profiles, which is bringing in a big profile at log on and saving a, a, a big profile back at log off, um, which makes things much more efficient for the user. Uh, and also we've just moved between Windows XP and Windows 7 there without having to do any sort of manual migration. Uh, all we had to do for this user was pop them in the right AD group and their settings are, are, are now very flexible and uh, are going to move around um, with their relevant environments. So one last thing to uh, to show on here is I'm just going to log this user off of both machines. And when that's done, we're going to look back at our central server again and. Uh, see actually how we configure this. So back to my management server and uh, we've got some other folders here as well um, which I mentioned earlier, some that we've redirected. But we've also done some um, uh, some backups as well. So what I've done here is take some backups of the user's data. So those um, reg hives that we, uh, that we copied out when the applications closed, I've now taken backups from and this is going to do, every time the user logs off, we're going to take a, a backup of their data. You see we've got two here because we, we backed up, uh, we logged off twice. What this means is that we can restore user settings from any point um, uh, in the past. So I've got this set to keep five days worth of backups. Um, so if the user does call the help desk with an issue, we can simply just copy the, the relevant uh, files from within here, pop it into our Hives folder, and the user is going to have their settings back to how they were previously. So let's just take a quick look at how we actually set this up within Environment Manager. So this is my Environment Manager configuration, which is on both of these desktops. And um, if I go down to the uh, process start node here, so this is where we've um, brought in the user settings um, that they have previously saved. So I've got two uh, nodes down here, one for Office and one for Adobe Reader. So if we just look at the Office node, now first off I've set a condition that the user uh, runs any of these applications, so WinWord, Outlook, Excel or PowerPoint. When that condition is met, we then check to see which group they're in. If they're in my legacy group, we carry on and we hive in the relevant um, registry settings there. That's if they do exist, of course. Similar scenario for Adobe Reader. Here we're just looking at the executable for that application. Again, we're checking the user group, and then we're once more hiving in the registry file, and also we're synchronizing a, a folder as well here, which is a, an app data folder. And then just in reverse, we're doing the same thing at log off, uh, sorry, at process stopped, um, but this time this is where we hive out the settings instead. So same scenario, but just in reverse, and it's just a case of ticking the right box there. So when in this case, uh, any of these applications close, 
we're going to export the office key out to our central location. And that's it really, that's a, a, a very uh, quick example of how we can manage user settings um, uh, a lot more effectively um, without using um, uh, the uh, best practice backend that we recommend. Now, I must emphasize again that this isn't the best practice method that we, um, that we suggest for managing user settings, but it is an alternative method and it also goes to show uh, what we can achieve with the absence management suite. Now before we uh, finish this off, I just wanted to show you um, a configuration that's been created by a, a third party. Um, now this has um, been created by a chap called Aaron Parker. Aaron is a third party consultant who's been working um, on Absence uh, products for, for quite a few years. Now Aaron builds and maintains this configuration which is available from his website which is blog.stealthpuppy.com. Um, and this is uh, a much more intricate example of, of, of how you can manage user settings in the, the way that we've looked at previously. So if I go down to the process start node here, as you can see there are a lot more options than, than I had in my uh, demo configuration. And Aaron's doing such things with Office, um, such as, if I just uh, pull these down here, we're checking users, we're checking registry keys exist, and again we're doing some hiding for the relevant keys and folders. Um, other applications here such as uh, remote desktop connection again we're setting and hiving based on um, these the, these applications opening um, so we can make these as, as, as complicated or as, or as simple as you like here we're just checking to see um, a few things exist such as the process running the users in the correct group and also um, if certain reg values exist um, now, as I say, Aaron's um, configuration is available from his website, blog.stealthpuppy.com, and I definitely recommend you to download it and take a look. Um, uh, there's much more in here that we can uh, go through at a, at a later time, but it'll give you uh, some really good examples of things that you can achieve um, with an environment manager. So thank you very much for your time. Um, I hope that's been uh, useful and interesting. Um, my name is Gary McAllister, and if you want to find out any more information, please visit absence.com.